All right, how is everyone doing today? Welcome back to another video. And today, what I have for everyone is my full review of the Samsung Galaxy Watch 4 Classic. So I've been using this watch for a good amount of time and I feel like I've gathered my thoughts and opinions on it. And that's what I'm going to share today with everyone. So hopefully by the end of this full review, you guys and gals know if this smartwatch from Samsung is still worth picking up here today in 2024, and or if this is the best high performance budget smartwatch that you can still pick up here today in 2024. Hopefully that's what this video helps you find out. So without further ado, let's jump into today's full review. Starting off here, the first thing I wanna talk about with everyone is the overall build quality and design of the smartwatch here. So build quality wise, in terms of the build materials, we have an all aluminum body on the front and on the sides. We have all aluminum buttons here, and then we have an aluminum crown, right? That is rotatable or bezel that is rotatable and does have features to it. Then flipping it over to the back, then we have a magnet with integrated wireless charging down here and all of our, our other sensors. So our barometer, our heart rate sensor, our GPS, our NFC, our MIT technology for wireless payments, our optical heart rate sensor, our EKG, all of our good sensors are built into the back here, all right? for tracking and all those other metrics, all right? And in terms of the overall build quality, in my opinion, I feel as though Samsung has done a great job with this watch right here, a great job indeed, all right? It has a very nice weight and a very nice and lightweight design to it, and it is very comfortable on the wrist. And in terms of the overall design, I do say I have, I really like this design. It looks very minimalist and classic, almost as if it's a traditional watch, but this has the added benefit of being an actual smartwatch. So you get additional features and health tracking, all right? So in terms of the overall build quality and design on the whole, I have to say Samsung has done a top notch job with this watch right here. All right, now moving on, let's talk about the overall fit and feel of the watch on my wrist. Let's go. And let me just show y'all this watch, depending on the watch band that you put on it, is extremely easy to put on and take off. And you can see it goes on just like that. And because of my nylon Velcro strap that I have here, all I gotta do is loosen it, slide it to where I want it to be, and then put the Velcro down and we're in business. Just like that, we're ready to go. And you can see in terms of the overall fit, it pretty much fits my wrist perfectly. In terms of the overall feel, because I have on my favorite nylon band here, it feels perfect on my wrist. And I actually like this actual band. This band is actually perfect for working out and or other exercising activities and this is the ideal comfort band in my opinion for sleeping so this works perfectly with sleep tracking as well but in terms of the overall fit and feel of the watch again this is another area where i feel samsung has done a top-notch job top-notch indeed okay now let me slide this off just to make it easier for the rest of this review We'll do it the way I had it before. So let's slide this off of here. Okay. And that will be, that will make it easier when I want to showcase different features here of the watch. All right. As I push all types of different buttons here, but let's rest this down. And let's continue on. Okay. So up next now, Let's dive a little bit deeper into the hardware and the software on this watch right here. 
let's go. Now, hardware-wise, up front here, we have a 1.2 inch circular Super AMOLED display, okay, with a resolution of uh, 396 by 396, okay? So it is a true circle. And it has a peak brightness if you use auto brightness of 1000 nits. So, and I gotta be honest with y'all, using this in direct sunlight with auto brightness turned on, I haven't had any issues. So this gets more than bright enough to be used outdoors in direct sunlight, no issues whatsoever, okay? Talking about more hardware features, this does have built into it and always on display functionality. In terms of the glass on the display right here, this is using Gorilla Glass, Corning Gorilla Glass, in particular it's Corning Gorilla Glass HD, okay? I don't know what the HD stands for, but it is what it is. It is Gorilla Glass technology, so that is nice. Now, in terms of the processor in this watch right here, this is running the Exynos W920 dual core processor. And in terms of the software here, this is running Wear OS with Samsung's One UI 5.0 skin on top. Okay, so it is Android's Wear OS, but it's running Samsung's One UI skin on top of Wear OS, okay? Now, in terms of the RAM, this bad boy is packing 1.5 gigabytes of RAM on board, and in terms of the internal storage, which it was very nice to see that this watch comes with internal storage built in, it has 16 gigs of onboard internal storage which is nice because if you wanna use the watch by itself, that means you could just load on your media directly to the watch, and then you're good to just use the watch by itself, or that means that you could load on your media and then put with the watch your favorite pair of earbuds, and you don't need to carry along your phone. This is ideal for those days when you wanna go for a workout or go for a walk and you don't feel like having your phone with you, you just load on your media to the watch itself and you grab your favorite pair of earbuds and you're good to go. So that's really, really good stuff there. And you can pretty much load up anything you want onto the watch, music, uh, photos, you name it. If it can fit on the internal storage, you can load it onto the watch and use it. So that's really, really nice. Okay. Talking about other hardware aspects, we do have Bluetooth 5.0 built into this watch right here. We do have AC dual band Wi-Fi built into the watch as well. We do have NFC, GPS, uh, um, <clears throat> a gyroscope, a barometer, an optical heart rate sensor, an EKG sensor. All the sensors for tracking all of your health metrics and movements are built into the watch, okay? Alongside that, this watch is five atmosphere resistant, so you can fully submerge this watch in up to three feet of water for 30 minutes and you should be good to go. And it is military spec 810G compliant. So this watch should be able to stand up to whatever you do with it on a day-to-day -day basis and come out perfectly fine. This bad boy should take a licking and be able to keep on kicking. And I gotta tell y'all, I have not been taking it easy on this watch in my time with it. And if you checked out any or all of my other coverage, you know some of the horror stories that this watch has been through and it still looks pretty much in mint condition. It does look a little dirty. I do have to detach the, my favorite band here and give it a deep cleaning with some disinfected wipes and then it will look pristine and brand new, but it is a little bit dirty in my time with it but it still works and looks and functions as if it's brand new, okay? But that essentially goes over all of the hardware on this watch right here. Now, in terms of the software, I've done a full dedicated software walkthrough slash setup video, so I'll link that down below in the video description along with all of my other extended coverage, but I'm just gonna give y'all my overall opinions of the hardware and the software on the whole. So hardware wise, I feel as though Samsung has done a top notch job here. Software wise, again, this is the fourth generation of Samsung's wearable in the Samsung Galaxy Watch 4, 
All right. So in terms of the software, I feel as though it's super duper refined and this is the perfect software for a wearable in my opinion, because everything here is fully customizable. So I got access to a bunch of different watch faces, just getting access to it on the watch itself. I can also go out to the play store on the watch itself and get more watch faces, or I can load up the companion application on my Android device and get more watch faces, but this watch essentially is fully customizable. So let me take y'all through my setup. So I got my main watch face here. I can really easily press down and switch that to some of my other favorite watch faces. Okay. And these watch faces are fully customizable so I can set them up exactly how I want them to be. Then if I swipe to the right, I have my sleep tracking set up. Then if I keep swiping, I have my weather set up. Keep swiping. I got all of my health tracking data set up. So my steps, my heart rate and my calories burned. Keep swiping. We got a live feed of my heart rate. Okay. Keep swiping. This is access to all of my recently used exercises and it does have an auto start exercise feature built in, which is really nice. Okay. Then this is my body composition and you can use the watch to take your body composition. So using the sensors on the watch, you put it on your wrist, you put your two fingers on the two buttons here on the side and you push measure and it will take a few minutes and measure your body composition just using the watch's sensors. And I got to tell y'all in terms of the actual numbers here, it's pretty darn accurate. Now I have a smart scale that I use to track all my health metrics. And this is pretty much spot on to the same health metrics that are on my smart scale. Right. And that use sen that uses sensors on the scale itself to get all of the same metrics when I take my shoes off and stand on the scale. But the fact that this is pretty much spot on to the same metrics that come out of my smart scale, that means that these are some really high quality sensors in my opinion. Okay. It's not quite 100% accurate, but it's pretty close. It's off by a few points. Okay. But that's really, really nice that all I had to do to get my body composition metrics was put the watch on my wrist, have it about an inch or so here. So you see where the indentation is. As long as I leave it there, put it on my wrist, touch the two sensor buttons here and then push measure. It's going to take about two to five minutes, two to five minutes, and it will get my whole body composition. So that is really, really nice there. Okay. Then aside from the body composition. Okay. Let's go back to it. We have access to my Bluetooth earbud controls. So my galaxy buds, which is primarily what I use with this and that works flawlessly. Then swiping over, I can add other widgets or tiles. Now also to go along with that, I have it to where when I do a double press, it brings up my calendar. So if I double press, you can see my calendar comes up or my last recent application comes up. And if I do a long press, it brings up Google assistant so I can ask it questions and it will give me a live feedback through the speakers and microphones on the watch as to answers to my questions. So really, really good stuff. So if I need to make a phone call, if I need to dictate a text message or reply, I can do that straight from the watch here. As long as my device is connected to the watch, I have no problems doing that. So really, really good stuff there. Okay. And then if I need to use a dedicated application on the watch, all I have to do is swipe up and then I have access to all the applications on the watch itself. And what's really sweet here is that when I connected up my Google pixel, it went ahead and automatically downloaded the Google pixel camera application. So if I ever needed to take a photo or take a video using the cameras on my Google pixel, I just launched the app section here, tap on the cameras 
and it automatically connects and launches. So you can see how seamless that is. All I had to do was tap the application on the watch. It automatically launched the phone. And now I have a live feed to my camera feed on my Google Pixel device. So I could take photos or if I tap in the settings, I can switch it and take videos. Anything I can do with my Google Pixel cameras, I can do with the dedicated companion application on the watch. And the really nice thing here is I do have granular zoom controls using the rotatable bezel here. So I can zoom in and out using the rotatable bezel. So really good stuff there. And this by far is one of my favorite features in regards to the software on the watch because y'all don't know how many times I've used this feature to record videos, right? And it's really, really nice to have this feature so you line up your phone and then you can start and stop the video using the watch. So really, really good stuff there, okay? And then when I'm done, push the home button and it automatically closes the camera app on my device and I'm good to go. I can carry on about my day. So in regards to the software on the watch, and again, this is fully customizable. You have access to the Play Store straight from the watch, so you can load up any app that you would like, okay? Or you can use the companion application and configure it, this watch exactly the way you would like. So in terms of the software, again, I feel as though Samsung has done a top-notch job here. Top-notch indeed, but I was expecting nothing to less because again, this is the fourth generation of Samsung smartwatch, and I do believe they're up to generation six as of the recording of this video. So this is a little bit older generation of Samsung smartwatch, okay? But this is some really, really top-notch, super, super refined software in my opinion. Okay, let's keep it moving now. So on the hardware and software on the whole, if I was unclear, it's top notch in my overall opinion. Okay, it's very seamless and very nicely integrated and there's little to no issues in regards to the software and the hardware on the whole. So that's top notch overall in my opinion. Now moving on here into the next category, let's talk about the overall battery life and the overall charge times of the watch itself. Now, I've tested this watch in various different configurations, and I've um, you know, come out with countless charging videos for the watch. Again, I'll link up all of my extended coverage down below in the video description. But that being said, in terms of the configuration I have now, I have the always on display turned on, and so when it's on my wrist, the display turns on all the time or stays on in an always on display format all the time. And then all I have to do to interact with the watch is raise my wrist and it wakes up and then I can do whatever I need to do on the watch. And I showed y'all how my setup is, right? So that is really, really cool in my opinion, right? But this particular setup in terms of battery life, this only gives me about a day and a half of usage with my style of heavy usage, right? Now, other configurations, using the watch in other configurations, I was able to squeeze out up to two and a half days of usage in terms of battery life with my style of heavy usage. Now, in terms of the battery life, I would have to say that's, that's pretty bad. That is pretty bad, especially coming from the last smartwatch that I reviewed and did coverage on in the CMF Watch Pro, which with the same style of usage was getting me about eight to 11 days on a charge, okay? But granted, that watch didn't have as many features as this one, but I was still expecting a little bit better battery life from Samsung, Pretty much this is the same battery life from the Galaxy Gear S2 that I reviewed a long time ago. And pretty much from what I understand, this is pretty much what Galaxy watch owners get on their Galaxy watches. Up to two and a half days of battery life, but pretty much about one and a half days with regular usage, depending on what you have syncing and pushing to the watch. And honestly, that's about what I got. So. 
that battery life is not good. I, I can't sugarcoat it. Y'all know I got to keep it 100 with y'all. Now, ideally, and I've said this in other videos, in other videos, can't talk today, my bad. But ideally, you would want to see a minimum of seven days of usage on a single charge with regular usage and not having to turn off or dial down any functions on the watch. Seven days is a full standard week. Okay, we're not talking about a business week here. We're not talking about five days. We're talking about seven days. That's the minimum I feel these smart watches should get you in terms of battery life. Ideally, ideally, you would want to get up to 14 days or two standard weeks of usage. That's similar to something that I, similar to the type of usage that I got from something like my Mi Band 4. This way you're not having to charge the watch every day or every other day. You can pretty much use it and have the comfort and no anxiety with the fact that you know it's gonna last that standard two week period, okay? So the battery life on this watch is not the best in my opinion. And if there's any area that needs improvement on the watch, it is the overall battery life. Now, with that being said, you can hyper mile the battery life by putting it in different low power modes. But as I've said, that limits the overall functionality of the watch. And ideally you would wanna have the watch set up exactly how you want it and not have to limit it and still get great battery life. But there are low power modes or even a dedicated super battery mode called watch only mode that can get you a good 10, eight to 10 days when the watch is in that mode. But again, you have severely limited features and functionality. But if you need to squeeze out every additional drop of battery life, you do have access to those modes, okay? So there is that. But again, the battery life in my opinion is not good, all right? But ideally, right? Uh, well, I shouldn't say ideally. I mean, as long as for me, the watch can get through a full 24 hour period so I can track my sleep and other metrics while I sleep because sleep tracking and health tracking is extremely important to me, then I guess I'm okay with that, but that's no excuse for the bad battery life, especially on the fourth generation and newer. It should be a lot better at this point, but it is what it is, okay? Now, moving on, let's talk about charge times. And again, I've done several dedicated battery videos showing y'all the charge times. So I'm just gonna average my charge times based on those testing videos. But on average, this particular smartwatch can charge up in roughly about an hour and a half. Okay, depending on the percentage that I put it on the charger at. Now it does support wireless charging, but sadly, my particular wireless charger could not make good enough contact to consistently charge the watch on a regular basis. So although I did say I would not be using the wireless charging puck that came with the watch in the unboxing video, I did ultimately end up using that because that's the only way that I can get a consistent regular charge with the watch. Okay, so, and honestly, the cable on that included wireless charging puck is a little bit too short, okay? So you might wanna go ahead and get a third party one with a longer cable, okay? But I did have to ultimately bite the bullet and just end up using that included wireless charging puck to make sure I can charge up the watch without any issues even though it does support wireless charging, okay? But that being said, on average, the watch took about an hour and a half to an hour and about 47 minutes to reach a full charge. Now, my slowest charge, when it was pretty much almost dead, took about over two hours, maybe two hours and 15 minutes. And again, my fastest charge was just over an hour and a half, roughly about an hour and 33 minutes. So the charge times on this watch are actually really good. And in all honesty, I was easily able to use it through a whole 24 hour day. 
and then throw it on the charger while I'm taking my 45 minute get ready period. And then when I got ready, it had more than enough juice to get me through a whole nother entire day. So again, as long as I remember to throw it on the charging puck while I was getting ready in the morning, I had enough juice to get through another heavy day. So ideally, although the battery life is not the best on this watch, the charge times are really good and kind of make up for it, okay? But if there was any one area where this watch did need improvement, it would have to be the overall battery life, okay? So on the whole, I would have to say the battery life and the charge times on this watch are good, okay? Now moving on here, let's talk about the overall durability of this watch. Let's go. Now durability wise, I have to say this watch is great. In my about month of usage, I'm a couple days shy of a month and my birthday is actually in a couple days. So I went ahead and decided I'll shoot this video early. But in terms of the durability, this watch is top notch in my opinion. This watch has pretty much been through the ringer since I picked it up and it still looks and performs as if it's in brand new mint condition. Again, it's just a little dirty, but it still functions and does everything that I needed to do. And I have put this watch through the ringer, as I've said. I've banged it on my car door multiple times. It's dropped off my wrist and hit the wooden floors in my house multiple times. It's popped off my wrist in the gym and went flying across the gym and landing on the gym floors multiple times. And you know, I generally just not have been very nice to it, but that's by no fault of my own. I am after all super clumsy. So when I test these products, they really do go through the ringer. And I'm very happy to report that in terms of the durability, this watch holds up perfectly fine. So the durability, in my opinion, is top notch. Top notch indeed. Okay. Now for this next category, I just want to take a few minutes and summarize all the positives and negatives of this watch that I have experienced in my time with it. Then we're going to move on to another important category. So if you watch no other part of this full review, as long as you watch this next category and maybe the final category, you should get a very good overall general idea of how I feel about the watch on the whole. But that being said, as I always say, I am not perfect and I never claim to be. So if I point out a positive and or a negative in this next category that you pick up the watch and did not experience, please leave your feedback in terms of the positives and negatives of this watch. If you decide to pick it up down below in the comments, only through providing our feedback can we get overall improvements or i.e. better products that we spend our hard earned money on. That being said, as always, I'll put up a full list of the positives and the negatives of this watch and post. So please feel free to pause the video and read whatever list you're interested in. And remember guys and gals, if you do leave your feedback, please do so respectfully. We're all grownups. We should be able to respectfully leave our feedback. Okay. But without further ado, let's dive into the positives and negatives category here. Let's start off with the positives first. So the overall build quality and design, in my opinion, is top notch. The overall fit and feel of the watch, in my opinion, is top notch. The overall combination of hardware and software, in my opinion, is top notch. Okay. The overall durability of the watch, in my opinion, is top notch. And this watch actually has a wide variety of accessory availability and is available for a really great price. That pretty much summarizes all of the positives, in my opinion. Okay. Now let's jump over and quickly talk about the negatives. And again, it's no surprise here. In terms of the negatives, the only two negatives that I experienced is that I do wish it charged a little bit faster and I do wish the overall battery life was better. Those by far were the only two negatives that I experienced with this watch and my time with it. Okay, so that summarizes real quickly the positives of this watch and that summarizes real quickly the negatives of this watch. All right, let's move on now 
to some other categories. Up next now, I just wanna give my overall thoughts and opinions on the overall call quality of the onboard speaker and speaker phone calls on this watch, okay? Now, in terms of dictation, dictating text messages, dictating emails or responses, didn't have any issues with this watch. And in terms of phone calls, the phone calls on this watch were really good. They got the job done, depending on the scenario that I was in. And I was really, really happy to see that. As long as I had it connected to my device, I can pretty much seamlessly make phone calls and they will get pushed directly to the watch itself. All right, now, if you want to truly be able to use the watch independently of your phone, you will, however, need to get the LTE variant, which incorporates LTE and Bluetooth, but that gives you the ability to truly use the watch separately from your device. That variant of the watch does, however, cost a little bit more money. The variant of the watch I have here is the Bluetooth and Wi-Fi only variant. So this one does not have LTE built in. So in order to test these features, I did need to have it tethered to my Android device. And I'm very sad to report that this particular watch only works with Android. So I could not test this with my iOS device. That was kind of saddening to see. I wish I could test it with my Android device, but sadly this isn't I wish I could test it with my iOS device. Man, I can't talk today. But sadly, this is an Android only device, okay? But in terms of the overall call quality and speaker call quality, it is really good in my overall opinion. Again, depending on the scenario that you try to use it in. Now, what would I compare this to? Comparing this to the CMF Watch Pro that I just recently took a look at in terms of call quality and speaker call quality, I would have to say roughly they are about the same, okay? So that one was really good, and this one is about the same as that one, but I was kinda expecting more because again, this is the fourth generation. The CMF Watch Pro is on the first generation, so I was expecting it to be a little bit better and more refined. And the fact that it came out to be just about the same is why it's not top notch. It was downgraded to really good in my overall opinion. Okay, now let's move on and get into the final part of this review. Let's talk pricing. Let's talk overall availability. Let me get into sharing my overall final thoughts and make overall recommendations. Okay, let's go. Now, starting off here in terms of the pricing, I was actually able to pick up this smartwatch from Amazon for a little bit over $100 after taxes, okay? I'll go ahead and throw up my digital receipt in post so you guys and gals know exactly how much I paid for this one. As always, I'm all about keeping it straight 100 around here, okay? And that being said, I do want to disclose that pretty much 95% of the bands that came in for the smartwatch did come into the channel free of charge thanks in large part to the Amazon Vine program. And all the watch bands that I paid for, I went ahead and showed y'all via digital receipts how much I paid for them. Okay? So I just want y'all to keep that in mind. But in terms of out-of-pocket costs, I paid roughly over $100 for the smartwatch after taxes. That being said, if we wanna just pull up the live listing here real quickly on Amazon, which I have pulled up in my computer in the background, let's see how much this watch is going for right now. Keep in mind this live pricing will not include the taxes, okay? so. Right now, the Samsung Galaxy Watch 4 Classic in the 44 millimeter variety, which is the same one as this one, which is also compatible with down to 22 millimeter bands, is going for right now $89.99. So about $90 in used, refurbished, good condition from Amazon. Now let's see the cheapest one I can find, right? Now, you can also find it as cheap as $69.99 in refurbished 
condition. Okay. And let's see, I see another one here for $79.99. So this bad boy is fluctuating in price right now from $70 all the way up to $90. Keep in mind that the, that does not include the overall taxes and shipping and handling costs, okay? You have to factor that in wherever ap applicable for yourself, okay? So at that price, can I recommend that you guys and gals go out there and pick up this smartwatch if you're in the market for a fully featured smartwatch like this? And is this the best budget fully featured smartwatch that you can pick up now today here in 2024? Well, yes and yes. For that price, I really do feel as though you're getting a really, really nice designed and feature packed smartwatch for a really good price. And is this the best budget full featured smartwatch available today? Well, I would have to say yes. As far as what I've tested and experienced, I will have to say Samsung does have the best budget smartwatch, okay? In terms of budget and full featuredness, I will have to say Samsung does have the best. Okay, so that guys and gals does it for today's video. Once again, I hope you guys and gals enjoyed the video. I hope you guys and gals found it helpful. If you did, you know what to do. Please help your boy out by doing so. As always, if this video piqued your interest, all the links to where you can pick up this watch via affiliated purchasing links will be available down below in the video description, as well as all of my extended coverage on the watch will be available down below in the video description as well. And when you make your purchases using those affiliated buy links, I do get a small percentage of commission that I do put back into the channel at no additional cost to you guys and gals. And because I link up all of my extended coverage down below in the video description. That does make the video description a one-stop shop for you guys and gals, and you should be good to go. Today's video was recorded using the rear-facing primary camera on the Samsung Galaxy S10e in 1080p. I am using my professional clip-on audio microphone here today, so please let me know how you feel about the overall audio and the overall video quality down below in the comments. And I am also using my professional studio lights here today as well to light up the entire scene. So please let me know what you think of the overall lighting. As always, all your feedback is greatly appreciated. And remember guys and gals to keep your feedback down below in the comments, respectful, please. I hope everyone is having a great day. I hope you guys and gals are staying safe out there and I will catch everyone in the next video. Have a good one, everybody. We are out of here. Peace. All right, another video done, another Sunday. It's time to wrap this up, send this over to my tablet, and then we can sit down and do the editing process. I'm gonna do my best to get this out as fast as possible for you guys and gals. Now, my birthday is coming up, so you guys and gals might see a dip in the video output because I will try and take some time off for my birthday, but you know, helping you guys via these videos it kind of does make me feel better. So I do have a tendency when I'm feeling really down to like bury myself in video work and it does make me feel better. So you might see a dip in the content being released. That means I actually took some time off, but you also might see an uptake in the content being released. That means I got super depressed and needed some relief and started to pump out content. So depending on how it gets released, y'all know what happens, but I'm gonna do my best to get this out for y'all as quickly as possible. But I also, it's Sunday, it's laundry day. I gotta go clean up, do my house chores, do my laundry, and then I can sit down and edit this for you guys and gals. But again, I digress, I'm, I'm rambling. I hope everyone is having a great day. I hope you guys and gals are staying safe out there and I will catch everyone in the next video. Have a good one out, everyone. We are officially out of here on this one. Peace.